Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, I thought I'd just make this video because the thought has crossed my mind. And that is, is, is it worth saving up? This is kind of like one of those questions. Is it worth saving up to get a $200 buoy or... Would it be better to get a bunch of other inexpensive buoys? Well, first off, the, the answer is this isn't an either-or type of statement, you know. Uh, you can do both. You know, you can get the inexpensive ones and use them as beaters or whatever, and you can use the expensive one as a collector or as a user. I'm actually going to use this one with little survival Bowie type stuff uh buoy buoy whatever type of stuff we get into um it's gonna be you know from a retired guy that you know doesn't have access to a lot of woods and stuff but um having had this in hand i would say it's worth it see this is just a personal thing it, this is going to be a personal choice to you is it is it worth it to you to have, um, like the Sesco buoy, man, this is, it's a great knife, but you can just tell when you hold it in the hand, it's not this knife, you know, and I think a lot of this has to do with the, the style of buoy, it's like the V44 Marine Raider type buoy, if you get one of those in hand, it might just be the shape, you know, so, uh, the Ontario one, I think it's like the SP-10 or something. They got a bunch of different numbers. But it's, it's shaped like this. But really, this is one of those type of knives that if it got lost or stolen, with my current budget and everything else, yeah, I would, I would do without um, other knives to replace it. Just because nothing feels like this in hand. Um, and they, they do things that inexpensive knives uh, wouldn't do. Like this. You see how this snap comes across like that? Well, it just happens to be perfectly lined up. Any other something, you know, would have stamped it and this thing would come cockeyed or whatever. It's just one of those attention to details. This is more like a presentation type of knife the way it comes even the box you know it's got that red velvet in the back and if you just wanted to display a knife up there for looking at man you can't you can't beat one of these um now after you know looking at it and and just admiring and everything i will show you only one minor fit and finish thing that i found and that's this casting of brass right here wasn't complete. Um, the way I look at this is it's an individual knife now. No two knives are going to look exactly like this. And it's not that bad, but it's just a casting. I mean, the rest of it is very well done. These little stars back in. Come on, focus down here. Look down there, you idiot. There. And... Uh, yeah, these handles are synthetic, but it's not just like a round, you're not holding a broom handle. You know, it's been sculptured. It fits my hand perfectly. It tapers down, which is good, but then you've got this little, you know, honk in here, here that really locks it in place. You're, you're, you don't need a lanyard for this one. It's, it's not going anywhere in your hand. Now, the cross guard... Uh, you only find this from wearing it. Uh, I was sitting down with this, you know. I wore it. Like I said, I wore it all day. I would have worn it all night, but I sleep on my side in a rollover. And this is, it feels like you're sleeping on a log. But uh, the knife was sitting like this. And my elbow came back. And man, that caught me right in the funny bone. Oh. <laughs> so you really, it'd be better if this thing had a dangler. If you're going to do any sitting down and stuff that's another thing too they embossed it on the back and on, on the strap a lot of places would just leave that off 
I'm telling you, there, you paid more money for it, but it's extra. Now, this little kick right here, I, I've been curious about it. I haven't, you know, tried to research it too much or anything and figure out what it is. But what I found out is there's, there's two purposes. One, I don't think is the real reason behind it, is that if you've got it in a back pocket, this helps keep the whole holster from coming out. The other one is if you're holding it like this, I've never had any problem you know with my hands slipping out but this is kind of a ramp like this one here so when you're holding a knife and withdrawing it from the sheath like this if your hand goes to slip it stops I never I've never had an issue you know with my hand slipping off of a sheath well you know while holding it but still there's kind of been a reason you know for that i haven't seen it on other knives usually they follow the contour of the blade the other thing about this that's nice is the way it's weighted and the belly and everything it wants to hit right here like i said i haven't done a whole lot of chopping with it i was sharpening it up a little bit to get it a little bit more crazy sharp but i've mostly just been carrying it taking it out <laughs> looking at it handling it now if you can't afford it and you just want a big knife and everything you can't go wrong with any of these other ones like the charade buoy is a really nice one um it feels kind of light in the hand for a buoy but you know it's all right this d handle guy is a is another great one you know um but yeah i mean you can tell the difference between a $20 knife and a $200 knife if you get them in hand. <laughs> uh, there really is a difference. And you can't take, you can't take 10 $20 knives and make one $200 knife. I don't want to sound like a snob or anything, but that's just a fact. You know, that if, if someone spends all the money from all these other knives and throws it into this... And then it's made in America where, you know, it's going to cost them more for labor and everything else. And then it's a well-known company and it's got, you know, intrinsic value to it. Where if you wanted to resell it, if you didn't sharpen it and all that stuff like I did, um, it's probably going to go up in value. But, um, yeah, where these other ones, they're always going to be around, you know, there were so many of them made and... They were made so inexpensively and everything that they're not going to gain a whole lot of value as far as resale. But to you, as a user, this may be the best knife you've ever had, you know, because it was the first knife you got as a kid or it's your first big knife, you know, and you just had fun. That's all a knife needs to do is for you to use it or look at it or hold it or whatever and you would get enjoyment out of it. That's, that to me, you know, if you use a knife and it, you're just happy with the utility of it and how well it was made or how well it does its task, you know, you, you kind of link up with the past on a lot of these traditional knives, you know. It, it's, uh, it links you back to a time when, man, you, you pack this guy on your hip every day. It's like packing a forty-five. A forty-five is not a light gun. It's not a plastic fantastic, you know. So, uh, you notice the weight of one of these, but also you notice the substantialness of it. It doesn't feel light. None of these other ones, you know, feel like this light and flimsy. Uh, these just feel like, you know, what you would expect a knife to feel like. But this one is not balanced the same as that one. And this, this blade... I think this one has like a nine and a half inch blade on the case. This one right here is a little bit longer. <clears throat> but sometimes the blade can get a little too long. I know that's almost sacrilege. The blade can get too big? What? What? Just depends on what you're using it for. Really, once they start getting to this size, they start getting to where. And it really is, it really was, you know, like one of the first survival knives because people tended to not just, you know, 
get into knife fights, but they did a lot of other chores with it, you know. With this, you can almost use it like a little, a little shovel, like a little trowel. It'll go in and dig the dirt. It's sturdy enough, you know. And uh, it can act like a machete, you know. There's just a lot of uses for a, a knife this big if society would, you know, allow you to carry it, which, you know, back then... You were society, and nobody really worried. The only time you had to worry about any of that type of stuff was maybe in a big city where they made you check your firearms, but most of the time they didn't search you. People had boot guns and little derringers, and uh, usually still had their knife with them. They would they'd hardly ever make them take their knife off. So there you go. That's just my thought. I think it makes it makes you rethink. You know, like. Should I get a bunch of these just to complete the collection? Well, if you like them, yeah. You know, I mean, if, if you like, wow, this is different. I know it's kind of gaudy and weird, you know, but it's... What other knives have you seen? It's got like, almost looks like red turquoise or something in here, you know, and a black widow spider and, you know. Yeah, that's all it takes for me to... Yeah, I've got other medium-sized toothpicks or whatever... I've got more than one, but I'm a collector. It doesn't always have to be expensive stuff for me to collect. You know, I like collecting inexpensive. And uh, if I can afford it expensive, usually I can't. That's why, you know, there's kind of a question like a grail knife. For me, as far as the buoys would go, yeah, you can spend more money on custom knives. But as far as a production, cust you know, a production buoy knife, this would be like the ultimate. It'd be like the grail. And for those of you that have always been looking at one and thinking, well, I wonder if I should get one. Man, really, I, I would suggest, I would recommend that you do it. That you, you know, save or whatever, whatever it takes and get one. If, if you haven't handled one, if, if you have handled one, then you already know how good they are and everything. But still... Um, yeah, I, basically it's, to me, it's worth it. it. It's worth, it's worth getting, you know, you're supporting an American company. If that, if, if that motivates you, you know, if you're one of those China haters, here's your chance, man. Show your support, you know, of an American company. Buy a case knife, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Stop, stop anti-Chinese ranting on your Chinese phones, you know. Do something productive. You know? Spend $200 on a Bowie knife made in the USA. Really support any... Nowadays, I think it's, it's, it's wise to try to support local uh, manufactured uh, stuff because supply chains are always a big issue, you know, like... There's 400 million Chinese locked down, more than the population of the United States of America, the total population. 400 million Chinese are locked down. For those of you that don't like Chinese products and everything, you should be celebrating as you uh, do without a lot of stuff. And, and maybe that's what we needed. You know, I don't want to get into total politics here and everything, but maybe that's what we needed was a lot of issues with China to get us away from um, buying all the Chinese products. I personally, like I said, like quality no matter where it comes from, no matter what country it comes from. If it's done well and everything, I appreciate that. I don't go digging into their political history, you know, how far they abused indigenous, indigenous cultures or something, you know, back. Yeah, that, that's bad, but, you know, it doesn't affect me nowadays. Sorry. I'm not in the 1800s or, you know, I'm not, I'm not living in the past too much other than when I get one of these and then my mind goes back into the past. But, all I'm saying, if you've ever wanted Bowie knives or if you've ever wondered, is it worth spending, you know, um, 10 times as much to get basically a, the same knife? Well, the answer is if you get one of these, it can do everything those can do, and still be looking good. 
and still have some um, retail value, you know, if you wanted to resell it or trade value. Um, none of those are going to be able to, to reach that point. Does that make these knives junk and worthless? Well, and to some, that's, that's a personal opinion, you know. To some people, that, that's, that is junk. But to me, it's not. Because if all we had was knives like these, and and none of these existed or if they did they cost the same amount of money but they were still junk or uh you know inexpensively made well you'd still be better off getting one of these because it's made better it's, you know uh these are made well enough to do what they need to do which is you know be a beater knife or you can use them too you don't have to just that's what I said. You you can use this one too. I've seen videos of people beating the crap out of this knife, man. <sighs> Abusing the hell out of it. What I would consider abuse. You're never gonna see me batoning this knife. And the reason why is I've never needed to baton wood. Yeah, I've I've smacked the back of a, a knife to make a notch, you know, but I haven't Beat through kindling. You know, jeez, I've got a hatchet. I understand that, yeah, you're. it's a survival situation. That's why I said you'll never see me do this because if it's a survival situation, I'm not going to be filming it. <laughs> Look at me. I'm finally down to splitting kindling because I'm almost dead while I'm videotaping this, you know, for you guys. No. Uh, I'd be using a battery to call for help or something. Anyway. That's my long-winded ramble on whether or not um, a $200 knife is worth is worth it. And in my opinion, you know, again, this is just a personal opinion, it's worth it. To me, if I lost all of the, my Bowie knives because of a fire or whatever, and I wanted to replace them, I would save up and, to get this one. I would skip these other ones. And save up to get this one. Or, again, it doesn't have to be an either or thing. I would pick the best one of the inexpensive buoys that I've had and use that. Get that one for my immediate fix. You know, like one day. One day, baby. You're going to have a case sitting right next to you. Competing with your attention. No, no, don't do that. I'm much better. No, you're not necessarily much better. In my mind now, you're... You're, you're serviceable, you're okay, you're a good knife, there's nothing wrong with you, but, sorry, this one is, this one is better in appearance and quality and everything else, so sorry. That's just my personal opinion. You may be different. You may say, you know, I, I hate this knife, I think it's overvalued, they charge too much, I don't like basket weight. Um, a neighbor was WR and he abused me when I was a kid, so I hate anything that has a WR on it. You know, I mean, whatever. That's all. That's why it becomes a personal thing. It's a personal choice. Um, I think I've covered all the the bases on whether or not uh, it's worth it. To me, it is worth it. This is going to be one of those knives that if I get buried with it, I get buried with it. You know, like man. It's too good to give to anybody. Sorry. It's going with me to the grave. Of course, then somebody dig up your grave. Ah, I got it anyway, Uncle Bill. Ha! Thought you'd keep me out of it. I knew you were going to get buried with it. Anyway, I don't know if my family would be that way, but I don't know. They might. They're weird like me. So, there's mine. One little ramble. I know it's taking forever. Thank you for watching. And have a nice day. Have a buoy day.